I think for a lot of Catholics in recent years, uh, if we live our faith beyond, above and beyond uh, the minimum, it's very, very easy to be considered crazy, right? Uh, I think uh, those involved in the charismatic movement may have been referred to as the, for, by their family as charismaniacs, or people have gone to Medjugorje, they've gone to the mega forgery, or uh, you know, people like who, who uh, wasting time, right? Why are you watching mass on a Saturday? You don't even have to. You don't, even, you don't have to go to mass on a Saturday. Why, why would you watch it? So anything above and beyond the, the absolute minimum is often considered uh, unnecessary, right? And then it can even go f as far as to say it's, 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 it's bordering on insanity, right? People can actually say, you're crazy. You're crazy, ye tradies, right? For going to mass in a language you can't understand and ye charismatics and the, you know, the, the Legion of Mary, all, all mad, the lottie. You know what I mean? And this is exactly... Jesus' experience in the gospel today. It's such a short gospel. It's, it's kind of unusual. It, kind of, it, it ends uh, very abruptly. Jesus went home and it's such a crowd. So he goes home to his hometown and his, his family and his relations are there. Okay, So it's normally the place where you go to, I suppose, repose. Relax. Such a crowd collected that they could not even have a meal. People knocking on the door. Is Jesus there? Is Jesus there? I've got a son or a daughter who's blind, handicapped, lame, uh, some sort of an issue... Uh, there's, there's a couple of possessed people here, there's a paralyzed man, man with a hand, you know, can, can he come out, can, can Jesus come out a sec? Uh, the, the, like the place was hopping, okay? And you can imagine Jesus being Jesus, helping all of those he could. So the place was being constantly interrupted and a stream of people through. And then of course, people didn't have TV. So the neighboring houses would have come out going, what's going on out there? And, and they would have all kind of looked and said, why are all these, why are all these sick people here? They, they're infectious, jeepers, what? This, this guy, he's, he's endangering our health. By helping all these people, you know, you can imagine all like the. the, the, the I don't think that society has changed that much, um, but it just you can imagine how the bit of a hoo ha it, it would have it would have it would have caused in the locality. So, his rel relatives heard of this. They set out to take charge of Jesus, convinced he was out of his mind. The gospel of the Lord. <laughs> it's such an interesting way to finish a gospel. They're actually convinced Jesus is crazy. Not interesting. I mean, it's, it's, maybe it's not a gospel we hear about very often. Again, I think a lot of the time when we're presented Jesus, it's, it's a very kind of a harmless Jesus. It's a very, just Jesus helping people. Jesus had to actually overcome all sorts of obstacles in a similar way that we do. Obviously, his are far greater. But he had to over overcome the obstacles of being misunderstood, being considered crazy, being, being rejected, doing your absolute best, knowing that some people will not accept anyway doing your best even though for some it won't be good enough. Jesus knows these things. He's gone through them all. I was thinking of one of our sisters today when I thought of this gospel about uh, Jesus' relatives thinking he was out of his mind, not because she's out of her mind, but because her family thought she was out of her mind when she wanted to enter our community. And parents said, absolutely no, nay, never. And uh, so she climbed out the window one night and got a lift, don't you know how exactly, got some public transport and made her way to the uh, formation house of our sisters. Uh, so they thought she was absolutely bonkers. Uh, in the meantime, she, she blossomed, she blossomed in the community. <clears throat> her family came to visit uh, repeatedly. Her dad, who wasn't a practicing Catholic, uh, never actually converted and actually passed away a couple of years ago eventually came to accept it and see that this was actually good for her. That her, her, her his, his beloved daughter was happy there. The mom then came to visit the community regularly and is still a great friend of ours. But she had to overcome that, that obstacle of being considered crazy. So what is crazy? What is being crazy? I just looked it up this morning. So it says insanity. It's a mental illness. This is from uh, Psychology Today. It's a mental illness of such a severe nature that a person cannot distinguish fantasy from reality, cannot conduct his or her affairs due to a psychosis, or is subject to uncontrollable, impulsive behavior. Interesting. Interesting wee definition. Especially if you apply it to the spiritual life. Okay? Um, we cannot distinguish fantasy from reality. Is that true? Like someone look at what we do as Catholics and say, hang on now. You guys believe that a priest can work 
as Jesus and turn bread into God. And then you can just receive God in this little hosty thing. Man or that. And then you go to the Adoration Chapel and one of them hosty things is there and you believe that's God. Ah, that's, come on, 21st century. Genie. Right? So some of the things that we do, admittedly, might look a little crazy. Okay? Because you'd say, well, again, insanity is, is this inability to distinguish reality from fantasy. But our belief in the Eucharist, you see, it, it, this isn't just me all of a sudden believing um, this book is God, or that tree is God, or this light bulb is God. No, no, this is like a, such a long history of God preparing to reveal himself and give himself to us in this way. This was pre prepared for millennia. So this isn't just a sudden thought of mine out of nowhere with no relation to anything else, just completely uh, indistinguishable from, from reality. No, this is, this is prepared and revealed by God. So even though, yes, it may look strange, what it actually is, is the theological word for it, is that it is supernatural. It's, it looks odd, absolutely, but that's because it goes beyond mere natural things. So it's supernatural. So our faith has lots of supernatural aspects, which doesn't make them crazy. It just means that they are fairly beyond our comprehension. You'll pardon the use of my example yet again, but are we fish tank, our aquarium out there? Them fish in there have no idea what goes on in the world outside and around them. They, have, when we light the fire, not light the fire, when we were talking, we were playing a game last night, Catholic quiz. That, like no matter what we could or would want to do, we could never explain to them what we're doing. <laughs> that we're sitting around a fire playing a game. Like how do you explain that to fish? Okay, just like it's just how how do you even start? Okay. But it doesn't mean that what we're doing is, is stupid or wrong or whatever. It's just, it's beyond their comprehension. When we're talking about divine things, things of God, who on earth are we to understand God and God's mind and God's heart and God's plan? We, we, we understand like sparks of it, bits of it, bits and pieces. We're trying to piece it together. God's trying to reveal it to us in a way that we can understand. But I mean, to get our heads around divine mysteries, let us approach these things with a bit of humility. These are super natural, supernatural, they're beyond us. But we can, we can still understand them to a degree, but we'll never encompass the mystery. But we, we, like I can know that Jesus is in the Eucharist, can I explain it? Kind of, yeah, I mean I can. You know, we, we can use the terminology that we're familiar with, transubstantiation and, and the, the Passover and the Lamb of God and Jesus, the, the, lamb, the new Lamb, the Lamb of the New Covenant, instituting the priesthood, do this in memory of me. Okay, sorry for the 10 second summary of the Eucharist. But, so we can kind of explain it, yes, but can I actually get my head around what the Eucharist is? Can I quantify the grace it gives? No. No, like, I can't. Does it make it crazy? Absolutely not. But it's supernatural. Supernatural, yes. Crazy? No. I was thinking this morning as well about how for any of you who had a very active social life back in the day, I think a lot of us had the experience of doing things, regretting things, and then doing those same things again, even though we regretted them last week. But maybe they'll be better this week. So we do the same things. This is my simple definition of, of insanity that, that I had remembered from I don't know where. It's doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. You know, you drop a ball, pick it up, drop a ball, drop a ball and, and wonder what's going to happen to it this time. <laughs> well, I think we can be fairly certain it's going to drop. Who knows? <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay, my friend, take care of yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like maybe it'll... <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that, would be, that would be considered insane, all right? Do the same thing and expect a different outcome. But isn't that what sin does? We do the same thing and we expect a different outcome. We, ex we, we do the, uh, an action that we know was wrong. We expect it to make us happy. It doesn't. So we try again. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't give us happiness. So we try again. It doesn't work. So we try again. <laughs> that is insanity. Right? Sin is insanity. To, to, to choose 
an action that, that harms myself or others or my relationship with God, it may be thrilling at the time. Afterwards, it leaves me filled with regret, not due to the church, due to my own conscience, due to my own heart knowing this isn't right. But maybe if I do it again, if I do more of it, if I do it more often, right? If one pint is good, 15 pints must be amazing. And we lose all sense of, of, of reality, all sense of like the big picture. If I choose myself every single day of my life, what makes me think that I will choose God on the day of my judgment? If I choose myself for all of my life, do I think I'm suddenly going to choose him? Or will I choose myself again? So our faith is actually the most real and most true, the most sane thing that we can do, possess, live. It's the most logical, it's the, most, it's the, it's the wisest, it's the, the absolute best way to live. Because it's anything but insane, it's anything but doing things that we know are wrong and expecting a good outcome. That's insane. Uh, St. Francis of Sales, who's uh, fairly blunt at times, he says, the world holds us to be fools. Let us hold it to be mad. The world holds us to be fools. Let us hold it to be mad. I like that. Right? So they can point the finger at us and say, we're crazy, we believe in the Eucharist, we believe in the priesthood, what? whatever, whatever will be next on the list. And we'll say, yeah, but look at society. Look at where it's going, all this extra, all this freedom we have now. Are we happier? What are we doing with it? Are we building up a world where children are happy and safe? Where men know how to be men and act like grown-ups and fathers and priests? Do we have a world where, where women know, know how to celebrate their femininity? Do we have a world that's oriented towards God, our ultimate good, our eternal good? Or do we have a world that's just constantly oriented around the next fix, the next pleasure, the next amazing thing, product, item of clothing that's going to make us happy. Jesus' relatives set out to take charge of him, convinced he was out of his mind. This may happen us too, but we stay rooted in the Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is anything but crazy. That's the wisest thing that all any of us can do. So we ask our Blessed Lady today, Mother of Good Counsel, to guide us always to the heart of her Son. And in him may we find true peace and the root to renewal of our church. Amen.